Hi there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be analyzing the company T-Mobile, a telecom company that I'm honestly not really that big of a fan about, but we're not here to talk about my opinions. Let's take a look at the numbers and see if we can make an accurate representation of what this company should be worth, especially since their earnings are coming out on Wednesday before open. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. We are going to go right into the calculator, guys, because unfortunately, T-Mobile, ticker symbol of T-Must, does not pay out a dividend. Market cap of $156.1 billion. PE, guys, of 51.85, which is pretty high. With a share price of almost $125, this is pretty much just telling me that we want this to drop a significant amount, probably around 25 PE points. I don't even know if that's considered PE points, but whatever. Let's go with PE points in this scenario. Now, since they, they do not pay a dividend, this means that all of their cash flow is going into paying back down their debt to buying back shares and to make acquisitions. However, looking at the five year average free cash flow, we get a negative $683 million. So, right off the bat, we all know what happens when we get a negative five year average free cash flow, and that is that. Well, this kind of free cash flow, unfortunately, does not work. We're going to go through the fundamentals and analyze all the fundamentals. But then after that, we are going to switch to the book value to tangible book value ratios because unfortunately, the discount of free cash flow does not work. So coming over here to the fundamentals, starting with net income five years ago of $4.5 billion to one year ago, guys, of $3 billion. This is a decrease of 33%, which is actually a lot. And well, as you can see right here with the past five years, they have been pretty much hemorrhaging net income every single year. I mean, four years ago, they went all the way down to 2.9 billion. Three years ago, they went up slightly to 3.5, but then they just came back down again and then back down again the following year after that. Obviously, I would argue, you know, okay, two years ago, COVID happened, but this is a telecom company. You would think, you know, telecom, 4G, 5G, internet, just, just internet as a whole would have taken off right yet it didn't for some reason this is pretty much a really low number and within the past five years it was decreasing making this a really really bad metric taking a look now at the cash flow this is the cash from operations less your capital expenditures and as you can see right here we already saw the average five-year free cash flow it is negative and we can pretty much just see why five years ago of negative 1.4 billion dollars to one year ago of 1.6 billion dollars in the positive now while this is an increase of 213 percent the five-year average free cash flow is negative 684 million dollars and honestly you guys can see it right here it, this is actually very surprising because they've only had two positive years right and one of them was barely positive at 433 million dollars the worst one was two years ago where they hemorrhaged around 2.4 billion now obviously Obviously you could say oh because of covid right okay so you could say they had a lot more capital expenditures etc 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 and even looking at their capital expenditures you can definitely see that yes they did increase their cap x a significant amount and well they actually have been increasing their cash from operations pretty consistently throughout each year so this is mainly just the fact that they had to increase their capital expenditures a lot probably to cover a lot of issues during the whole pandemic now looking at the revenue five years ago of 40.6 billion dollars to one year ago of 80 billion dollars this is an increase guys of 97.32 percent and honestly this is what i would like the company to be looking like when it comes to their cash flow and income however they are not they're only here with this in the revenue so it is what it is it is an increase but you know one of the three metrics is not that good coming now to their assets and liabilities taking this difference this tells us whether or not the company is able to cover their debts and as you can see right here if they were to liquidate all of their assets they could not cover their liabilities right currently they would be at negative 2.6 billion dollars in assets minus liabilities and not only that guys well they were negative throughout the whole entire time now here's the thing though Here's the thing, even though you're probably seeing this and you're terrified for, for this, the biggest issue here is that telecom companies, for some reason, I think this is a sector thing. If you take a look at Verizon and especially AT&T, 
Well, they have a ton of debt. It's in the hundreds of billions of dollars. So yeah, this is not surprising in the slightest, especially when it comes to telecom company. This may just be an industry wide phenomena. Average total assets is around $15.4 billion. Average total liabilities around $17.2 billion. Taking the average assets minus the average liabilities, we take, we get negative $1.8 billion. Now looking at the shares, outstanding. Very, very interesting metric because this tells you whether or not the company is diluting you as the investor. And as you can see right here, they are diluting you a significant amount, right? Five years ago of 859.4 million shares to today, guys, of 1.2 billion shares. That is an increase in the five years of 45.36%. And from the previous year to the current year, we are looking at two years ago to one year ago, it is an increase of 0.6%. Now, looking at the five to four years ago, they were buying back. However, four to three, they issued, and then three to two, they just completely went haywire and, and issued, right? So probably because of the whole COVID thing situation, right? This was two years ago. But nonetheless, even if this does have a reasonable explanation, it is still a negative metric. And lastly, looking at the cash and equivalents, they currently have $6.6 .6 billion in cash and equivalents with an average cash and equivalents of around $4.6 billion. Now, this is the part of the video that I would normally make some assumptions. However, we really can't, mainly because of this free cash flow. And if we actually scroll down here, well, we can actually see that all of the target share prices are negative. Even if I were to put in a share buyback of like, let's say 10%, it is still going to be negative because their average five year free cash flow is in the negatives as well. But we can actually still analyze this company using book value per share and tangible book value per share as well. And coming over here, we have the book value per share of currently $55.32 up from five years ago of $26.25, which is 111%. Now, what is really surprising, guys, is, um, well, looking at the tangible book value per share, um, yeah, this is, uh, <laughs> this is currently negative $32.36. Um, yeah, I am not fully understanding this because, again, when it comes to these metrics, to, to the tangible book value, there is no math behind this. This is literally just being taken from Seeking Alpha's balance sheet, right? If you scroll all the way down, you can see right here, tangible book value per share. Negative 17, negative 15, negative 11, negative 27, negative 32, and negative 32.6. It's just increasing in the negative value which is again very very surprising so as it stands well we can only take a look at the book value per share and now doing the ratio when it comes to the current share price and the price divided by the current book value we pretty much get a ratio of 2.26 times overvaluation this means that the company is trading 2.26 times above what it should be 1x means that they're trading at value Anything under one is trading undervalued. Anything above one is trading overvalued. So this is trading almost more than double, right? Double and then a quarter times what the company should be valued at, which is just insane. All in all, when it comes to T-Mobile, this is my least favorite when it comes to all the three telecom companies, mainly because of the fact that, well, they have negative five-year average free cash flow and they don't pay a dividend. Even though AT&T has the most amount of debt and so does Verizon, at least those two, one, pay a dividend. And number two, well, they are, they actually have some profitability, right? At least they are making some money when it comes to their free cash flow and they can even afford their free cash flow. It's tight. It's a really tight number. However, they can still afford their dividend with their five-year average free cash flow, unlike T-Mobile. All in all, as a stand, this is a company that I personally do not like and looking at these metrics, it even turned me even more off. So that pretty much does it for this video, guys. I have these two calculators available for anybody to have. If the discounted free cash flow calculator works, you guys can put in your own assumptions and you can see the target share prices and the target share prices adjusting for debt, assuming that you get a positive five-year average free cash flow, right? You have to have a company profitability. When it comes to the book value, you guys can just get all of that in Seeking Alpha's balance sheet. I have a video explaining where to find all those numbers and also where to find all the numbers when it comes to the discounted free cash flow calculator as well. And I also have a dividend tracking sheet. You get these three free things from me. All I'm asking for in return, guys, is like, subscribe, comment. That's it. it really does help. Just help me grow my channel. That's about it. 
Thank you very much for watching. You guys can follow me on my new tech sites of Bitch Wild Stream Rumble. I also have a Let's Play channel currently playing through Sonic Unleashed. Link in the description below. So if you want to see that, you can follow me there too. With that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video.